Hi, this is Tracy H. Dean. I want to thank you for joining me today for another Oracle and Tarot card deck review. And today we're going to be reviewing the Tarot of the Renaissance by Giorgio Trevisan. Trevisan? Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is a low Scarabeo deck, and I love this picture on the back. Look at how gorgeous that is. Wow. Okay, well, I just received this deck, so I'm going to be looking at it for the first time. And I'll tell you, these boxes have me nervous because I don't want to rip it. So what I use is a butter knife to gently pry the box open. <laughs> I've learned my lesson well. We're trying to uh, pull these from the corner just causes rips and tears, and we don't want that. So uh, let's see what we have inside the box. Okay, we have a plastic wrap. Usually there's a pull tab here somewhere. We just pull it off, but I don't see... Oh, is there one here? Looks like there was a, a line here. Aha, here we are. Oops. Let me take the plastic one. Now, I don't know how this deck escaped me for so long where I did not get it. I saw it a few days ago and it was like, wow. That is a nice deck. Another reader was using it, and she wasn't saying what the deck was, but I was able to identify it with some of the pictures of the cards that she was pulling. Okay, and inside we're going to have your very basic, basic book. Okay, very basic. It's probably going to be in a few different languages. Yes, English, Italian, Spanish, French, and Dutch. It's going to tell you the origins of the tarot. The meanings of the major arcana, there aren't going to be any pictures. It's basically just going to be the number on the card, uh, the card itself, and a brief sentence, literally one sentence on each of the cards. And sometimes that's all you need. And if you're a seasoned reader, you're not going to need this. And if you're a beginner, you could buy books to supplement what the meanings of the cards are. And it's going to go through all of the suits. So basically, there's only 14 pages of English information. Actually, it's going to be about 11 pages because you have the other intro. Well, I guess you could count that as part of the uh, informational section that you're going to be using. And then each of the other languages are going to be the same. They're going to be 10 to 14 pages. So um, this is the booklet. And let's take a look at the cards. I love the design on the back of the cards. Isn't it gorgeous? And I love the fact these are my favorite size cards. They're a long, slender card, okay? Not really big, but not really small. And uh, if you know me, I usually trim the border. But with these cards, I don't know because there's going to be wording at the top and at the bottom. And I don't want to lose any of that. Yeah, see, these aren't going to be able to be trimmed. Otherwise, I'm going to be trimming off the information, which we don't want to lose, and even trimming down the sides. It may cut some of this off, so we're going to just leave them as is. So uh, we have them in different languages. Oh, and also, cardstock is on the thin side. It's okay. Uh, I'm careful with my cards. So I'm not too concerned about it. And I love the light pastel feel, the gentle feel of the colors on these cards. And you're going to have zero, the number of the card. Okay. It's the full, and you're going to have the full, dinar, el loco, le fo, el mateo, which would be the Italian word. So you're going to have your Italian, you're going to have your German, your different languages. And then we have the magician, el mago, the magician, and then one, and then two. So these will be in Roman numerals. Um, some or all of you, maybe none of you, uh, are familiar with Roman numerals. Um, so that may be a challenge for some. Okay. Three, the Empress. Four, the Emperor. Five, the Hierophant. Six, the Lovers. One of the two people down here. Every little cherub up here shooting their uh, little love arrow down at this couple. The chariot. 
Justice. She has the scales of justice. The Hermit. The Wheel. Strength. Now, I saw someone else do a review on this deck, and they were like, well, you know, this may be a challenge because it doesn't look like the original traditional writer Wade Smith. But I see a lot of symbolism and a lot of uh, things that are easily identified with both decks that are similar. Like, for example, we have the woman with the lion. I mean, that's your typical strength card, right? The hanged man, and you know, we have somebody hanging upside down. Death, with the grim reaper. Temperance. Now, this woman might not be um, standing by the side of a lake or a stream or body of water, but we still get the same feeling. She's pouring from one to another here. The devil. Okay, I mean, he's looks like the devil. We don't have the people down here shackled in chains, but pretty much so. He's the devil. He's got the serpent wrapped around him. He's got a bag of money. He's greedy. <laughs> he's El Diablo. <laughs> I like that devil card. And the tower. So here we go. We have the traditional tower that's bursting into flames and people are jumping out of the window. So... I could see uh, a resemblance between this and your traditional tarot, so I don't think it was a challenge at all. But then again, that's me. I'm a seasoned reader to some who are starting out, you know, uh, the star, the moon, where we traditionally have, you know, the crustacean down here and the two dogs and the moon, the sun. Look at how beautiful that is. That is such a beautiful positive energy radiating from this card and all these beautiful yellow flowers these little yellow sunflowers okay judgment sounding the trumpet and the people down below the world i mean i, I really love this deck like i said I, I don't understand how i overlooked it or didn't really know much about it, but I am so glad I, I got this. Ace of Chalices. Two of Chalices. Okay, three of Chalices. Now, maybe this is what he meant. Um, you know, we're used to the, the three of Chalices with, you know, three people you know, with their cups up in the air, and this woman seems to be sitting on a bench. So this card wouldn't be like a traditional uh, picture for the Three of Cups, nor would this here, the Two of Cups. Okay, so there are going to be cards that will not seem like. Now the Four of Chalices and the Four of Cups, we're used to seeing someone sitting under a tree in a funk, looking bored. Here, she's kind of looking bored. It looks like she's doing mundane household tasks. It looks like she's doing the dishes here. She's drying or polishing these things, and, and she doesn't look very enthused. But you could still get a, a sense of her emotion that she's kind of bored. Five of chalices. Six of chalice. The six of cups, we usually have children. Okay, in this picture, we have two grown adults. Seven of Cups, Eight of Cups, Nine of Cups. So I guess the Major Arcana is very similar to the traditional Tarot, but these are the cards that would be more of a challenge. Ten of Cups. Okay, and then we have the Knave of Chalice, which would be the Page. Knight of Chalice, which would be the Knight of Cups. Queen of Chalices, Queen of Cups. And that's interesting that we see her walking away. Usually the queens are perched upon their throne, looking straight forward or maybe off to the side, but here we see her backside. Okay, the King of Cups. 
Then we go into the pentacles, the dinare, ace of pentacles, two of pentacles, three of pentacles, four of pentacles, five of pentacles, six of pentacles, seven of pentacles, eight of pentacles. So again, we see the person walking away, but it looks like he has like a, like a, a graduation type of robe gown and, and a hat on, and he's holding something behind his back, like maybe a paper, a scroll, or some type of plans. And we're used to seeing somebody working at their skills with the Eight of Pentacles. And he very well may be involved in his skills. So it's an interesting take on it. Uh, maybe there is a book that I could uh, read to find out more about the background of exactly you know what the author meant by these pictures. Nine of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles, and then we get into the Knave of Pentacles, which is the page, Knight of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, the Ace of Wands. Okay, the two of wands, three of wands, four of wands, five of wands, six of wands, seven of wands. Now to me, that would be typical of what I would expect on a seven of wands card, someone standing their ground, defending themselves with all of these wands down below on them standing there. Eight of Wands, Nine of Wands, Ten of Wands. Typically, the Ten of Wands would be strapped to the person's back and they'd be bent over. They're exhausted here. They're, they're coming down at him and he's running away. Interesting. Knave of Wands, which would be the Page of Wands. Knight of Wands. Queen of Wands, what a beautiful card that is. King of Wands. And we have the Ace of Swords. The Two of Swords. The Three of Swords. Now, this could be very well heartbreak and, and betrayal. We have this woman here who's crying. This person's on the ground that was stabbed. Normally we see the heart with the three swords going through it, but I still feel the emotion of this card. So you might just have to look a little closer into these cards to pick up what they're about. But then again, you know, if you're a seasoned reader, you're going to automatically know, you know, what the three of swords is about. Four of swords. Normally we have somebody laying down, taking rest. This we have these swords pierced into a tree and there's a home in the background. Maybe the person has come home from battle, lodged his swords in the tree and went back into the house and is resting there. I thought this was someone laying here by the tree, but it's not. Okay. Five of swords. Okay. That would be typical. Six of swords. Seven of swords. Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords, Ten of Swords, and normally the Ten of Swords has someone laying on their back or laying face down, and the swords are inserted in them. Here the swords are um, making a stairway, okay, going up these, it looks like up these steps. But she still looks betrayed, disappointed, backstabbed. Knave of Swords, which would be the Page of Swords, Knight of Swords, Queen of Swords. She looks like a pretty calm Queen of Swords. Usually they have a more stern look on their face, like a don't mess with me. She kind of has a softened look to her. And her sword isn't drawn straight up, like, you know, making a statement like, you know, <laughs> I'm not taking any BS. 
Her sword is kind of relaxed. Her face is kind of softened. You don't know what's going on inside her head, though. <laughs> and the King of Swords. Okay, so this is a very interesting deck. Okay, I like uh, the shape of the cards. I love the background here. Let's see how they are to shuffle. Yeah, they're relatively easy to shuffle. Very satisfied with them. Like I said, the Major Arcana won't be too hard for a beginner, but I think the other cards would be a challenge. Um, I am so grateful to have this deck of cards to add to my ever-growing Tarot collection. Uh, if you've enjoyed this review, please like it by giving it a thumbs up, share it, and above all, subscribe because I will be back with more.